Maseva is referred to in Talmudic literature as a nefesh. Really? It's called nefesh. What's a nefesh? A soul. But the soul's in the ground. No, the soul, the, the body, the body or the remains are in the ground. Yeah. But there are different components of the soul. There's a nefesh, a ruach, and a neshama. But they come, they consume the neshama. But kai yechida, but we won't talk about those. Ruach, the ruach nefesh, is, ruach, and neshama are different parts of us. Our nefesh is really the, the more the, it's spiritual um, refinement of the body. There's a ruach which has something to do with our spirit and with our emotions, and then there's the neshama which is our intellect. So all these three parts of our soul are very powerful, have different roles to play. And we have a tradition, however, according to mystical teachings, that the the, the part of the that one of those of those three remains down here, has from time to time will revisit the kever or the, the grave, and is, is find it finds some type of sucker and and peace and solace by coming back to where it once it, it, it remains. And so, because of the nefesh, is something still existing. There's still some component of it in this world to make it an identification that it, it, it that that it shows respect for that soul, including its identification. That, you know, Yankel, Ben, you know, Moshe, or something like that. So he's, he's buried here. Hey, Milan, Tom Nikbar, Tom Nitzman, and and then the date. You know, when the person had. Right. On the Jewish calendar? On the Jewish calendar is a very important thing for that soul to identify with because it, it, it when all said and done, it's not an English soul, it's it's not a French soul, it's not a Spanish soul. It is a Hebrew soul. The Jewish soul is Israelite. And Israelite has its own language and it has its own identification and, and uniqueness that, that makes it, 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 be, it the very essence of the Jew, even possible. Uh, do you believe the soul has eyes to see and read? It doesn't have physical eyes to see and read. Uh-huh. It has a, 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 something that transcends that. And that is a knowing, a certain dot, that a, a recognition, understanding of, of, of what's going on below uh, that transcends even sight. So it's, it's it, yeah, it, in a sense, it's, it's a form of vision that it, it sees and knows. It knows what's going on. It knows when people go to the, when you go there, you're to the, to a loved one, Great, right? Or to let's say, great sadhu, a great righteous person, they're aware that you're, there's some part of them is aware that you're there. The things that you say there have carry weight. Once you be careful what they say to you about the whether it's just no longer exists at least mm-hmm. in the physical world in the tangible way that we do. So it's a very important idea, concept of showing respect at the cavern because they are aware of what's going on amongst the living. And amongst the, and, and maybe you're worried about themselves too, about the remains, etc. This is discussed in the Talmud, and I'm actually in the chapter book, page 18. 